now to uh, questions and answers. So if you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and ask them. So, yeah, can all of you back there hear us and see us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Um, again, uh, my name is Brenda Tran, and this workshop, when I was first, um, you know, asked to you know, come be one of the panelists, um, and, you know, what uh, the message that this workshop is really trying to uh, uh, communicate is, it's about volunteerism. Um, it's about, you know, giving back to the community. Um, and, you know, for us, for Jack and I, it's, uh, you know, we're going to share our experiences with you, uh, why we volunteer, um, uh, why we're getting involved in the community. And, you know, you know for my experience, I haven't, I haven't been doing this for a very long time. And the age group between you and me, we're, uh, we're very close. I'm only 29. Uh, so I pretty much just graduated from uh, college not too long ago, uh, you know, five years ago. And um, yes, I've worked out my, you know, my uh, way in, in corporate environment, and now I own part of the business as well. But and part of being a leader, and, and that's um, my position is, you, you know, part of being a leader is being able to give back to the community as well. Um, when I when I first got involved in wanting to volunteer, and it wasn't about, oh, you know, I want to give back. No. It was uh, mostly about networking. Uh, I wanted to meet other people and uh, share my, um, or just getting to know a little bit more about myself. Because I was in this workshop earlier uh, about cultural identity. Um, you know, I wanted to find myself. I wanted to know who I am as a Vietnamese American. Not only as a Vietnamese American, but as an Asian American. What is that? Because I wasn't exposed to a lot of uh, uh, Asian Americans growing up. So I wanted to know a little bit about myself. And that's, that's why I got involved. And, um, uh, of course, in Atlanta, Asians are so spread out. It's not like here. It's still a culture shock for me walking around here and seeing a lot of uh, Asian faces. So I um, Googled and uh, found this organization, which I'm currently the president of. Um, you know, the organization is called the National Association of Asian American Professionals. And um, I got, uh, I joined it. It was just a, uh, I was just a member. Um, and then I looked around and they do a lot of, uh, you know, community service, they do a lot of career advancement, a lot of uh, workshops, you know, trying to develop me to be becoming a, a, a leader. And uh, the, uh, the focus of the organization um, is to recognize certain issues that Asian Americans are, are facing. The, uh, this model minority myth, you know, the glass ceiling, and uh, all that stereotype that Asian Americans are, uh, are faced with. Uh, so that's how I, you know, I got involved. And, you know, I didn't realize that when I got involved, um, it's now it's becoming a, a passion of mine, uh, wanting to make sure that I'm representing the Asian community, but more importantly, representing um, the Vietnamese community, because Vietnamese Americans, uh, you know, from my experience, we are not very active in the, in the community. And just like uh, one of the um, audience earlier mentioned about the Red Cross, we don't do a whole lot of volunteer work. Or there's not enough of us who are doing it to have that impact. Um, so that's why I took the, you know, the lead and uh, wanted to build uh, you know, the national organization and then take that lead and, um, uh, you know, and, and, and come and represent. So that's, you know, that's, that's my background so far. So here you go. Tap, for your city, so you can, um, I, mean, I know, putting my age to that, almost 20 years ago, I was sitting where you were. Uh, at a career day, as I graduated from San Jose State, and I was listening to this speaker, a dynamic speaker, and he was a Vietnamese American attorney in the DA's office, talking about his career. I received a public education in my life. So how, what I feel is that my whole life and childhood experience has been benefited from the generosity of this country. So for me, I wanted to find a way to um, give back to a country that has given me and my family so much. So my immigration, my immigrant experience has really uh, shaped uh, my thinking and where I am today. And so I, uh, I started in college wanting to be an attorney. Again, the hearing the Vietnamese American uh, attorney speak about public service really crystallized my decision to go to law school and then um, eventually went to law school. And in law school, I um, wanted to be in a position where I felt that I, in, I can impact the Vietnamese American community and help them the most. So 
So I interned at the Santa Clara County Public Defender's Office, um, where I found, amazingly, there were no Vietnamese American investigators, paralegals, or um, at all attorneys. So again, that uh, confirmed my commitment to serving the community by becoming an attorney and my dream of becoming a public defender. And so that's what I did when I graduated from law school and went to the Santa Clara County Public Defender's Office for about four years. I, um, I was not the first Vietnamese American public defender there. There was another person who had worked there for about three or four months who didn't like the trial work lifestyle or career, so he quit. So but I was the first female Vietnamese American public defender in that office. And um, it was a great way, I found, to work with the Vietnamese community because uh, a lot of my cases dealt with defendants who were indigent, who were poor, who couldn't afford an attorney, and so they um, get free representation through the public defender's office. And because I was bilingual, a lot of my cases um, were Vietnamese American um, defendants. So that was one way for me to, um, to help the community. And then eventually I transitioned into civil service, which is where I'm at today at the Santa Clara County Council's office. Though I don't have direct um, uh, experience or work with um, the community, I get to work on policy levels at the county council's office by working with the board of supervisors. Um, and many people don't know what the county council's office does. My family still doesn't know. They still think I'm in the DA's office. Though I was never even in there because they, they didn't know what the public defender's office did. And um, I don't know how it is right now, but when I was going through law school, it was not the traditional track that um, parents wanted their um, children to go to. So it was a big fight to do that, to be where I am today. And um, in particular, because many of our families want us to go into the engineering or math, or the sciences or math, or the medical field. And so um, it was uh, not the traditional route. And by doing that, I, I know we went against that. So I, I'm not sure today. Is today, do you feel like your parents are in the same um, mode of thinking that law or an English profession, and it's not the traditional route. Does anyone have any input about that? Yes. It's still that way then. I'm seeing a lot of that shaking down. And, and the media, too, is another non-traditional field. Um, so uh, by going to, into this field, I thought this is the best way for me to uh, help the community. Now, not just public service, because public service is uh, working for like a county gov uh, government entity um, and other perhaps nonprofit agencies. But in addition to that, I, I wanted to uh, also do community service. So alongside with that, I would join um, a board of directors that were nonprofits or that had provided uh, free legal services to the indigent, in particular to help the Asian American community. Um, so I would try to help serve the community in that level as well. So but those were the reasons why I went into public service. Um, and and it's, I, found it, I find it to be very rewarding because um, it's a sense of uh, being able to help someone and if you can, if I felt that if I can just help one person improve their lives or make this uh, leave that day a better place for that individual, it was worth it. Um, so those are the reasons that motivate me. Now, I'm not sure if any of you would like to go to public service or just thinking about it and you might consider business too. Um, I have to say that public service, the salary is not as competitive as, of course, the business world. But what I've found is I have a passion for it, and, um, and the reward is not the financial reward, but it's the reasons why you go into it, and you find it rewarding because you're able to impact the community, you're able to help someone. That's what um, motivates me, and generally that motivates people who do community and public service. And about getting involved, um, for me, uh, being involved in the Asian community is uh, not only is it my passion, but it's my hobby. 
Um, I do it on my spare time. Um, I like uh, to take pictures, and that's how I really it got started. I was, you know, I like photography. Um, you know, I like to meet new people. I want, I, I like to get people involved. So um, the the van the officers recruited me and said, Hey, how about you be our uh, official photographer and uh, and I'll be our membership chair. And so and, and then when, once you get involved with it, then it opens you. Uh, it opens um, all these other opportunities to you. What I've gained from uh, volunteerism, um, it kind of like you know, like I'm saying, the rewarding feeling of, of giving back. Uh, but pick, pick an organization or pick a cause that is really important to you. Uh, right now, the cause that's important to me is that Asian American voice in corporate America um, about building leadership with you know um, with uh, within the, you know, the Asian American uh, professionals because a lot of us, uh, a lot of the Asian Americans are not are not. I would say like leaders, but they don't advance to that uh, next level in, in corporate America. So, uh, so that's how that's why I'm very passionate about it because we have we have the criteria, we have the training, um, we know we have the pedigree, but we're we are not recognized by our managers. Why? Because you know we're not speaking up enough, or so that's why the organization is there. But and you know I wrote I'm gonna read this paragraph that um, uh, that I uh, you know wrote up for. Workshop and uh, hopefully this you know, will touch some of you. Um, leadership is situational. Uh, leadership can't be taught, however, it can be developed. Uh, through community involvement and public service, you will be exposed to situations which allow you to be in a position of influence to affect change. Volunteerism is about empowerment, it builds self awareness and social responsibility. Not only does it develop your leadership skills, you will achieve personal branding and increase one's self worth. Advancing in corporate America requires development of leadership skills, often not found in any college course. Fortunately, getting involved in your local community will pave a path to leadership and career advancement, not to mention contributing to your working cause. Um, in, my, uh, in my involvement in the community, I have gained so much contact uh, through our corporate sponsors, through, uh, with other community leaders. If, uh, if something happens to Autopilot and I'm, I'm no longer the president or editor in chief or whatever, and then the company pulls it out of the anymore, then I know I can pick up the phone to the VP of International Security for UPS, Mr. Ken Lee, and I know I'll have a job just like that. I can call it Bell South because we do a lot of um, networking with them and collaborative uh, efforts. I can get a job with them. Singular Wireless, Verizon, you know, Coca Cola. Um, all, all, of the, all of the volunteers here uh, who, who helped put this event together, that's all volunteer work. And without their, uh, without their, um, their talents and, and their time and their commitment, commitment in putting all this together, not, none of us would be sitting here. So in order for, for us to really move ahead, uh, move forward as, a, as an Asian American or as a Vietnamese American, all of us need to take that initiative and, and, and give back. Um, somehow get involved. If if one of you like like you're involved in your local, you know, although you're not Asian, you know, you, but you get involved. Um, I'm not sure the reason you got involved in, initially, but I'm sure it, it grew into something, you know, more than that. Um, so all of us here have certain talents. Whether it's just um, you like event planning, all of this here is event planning, organizing all of this, getting uh, you know the, the skills that you're developing is project management, and, and you don't realize how useful that is when you are in um, the in, at work. Uh, how many of you are actually like at, graduated and currently working? Okay, that's great. A lot of you who are not there yet, you're not going to learn um, some of this managerial. You know um, skills, you know anywhere except you know either you're, you're you're put in that situation like at work or you're volunteering. And volunteering, I'll tell you what, it is really hard, but at the same time, it is very rewarding, very fun. Um, and the most the challenging thing about it is you're working with other volunteers too. So, and that's really hard because if if if, um, if Jane you know is not doing what she's supposed to like. She's supposed to coordinate this workshop, and she didn't. It fell through, you know. So, um, but how do you motivate them? So that's a challenge. But like if you're planning to advance in, in a man, uh, management role, um, community 
uh, getting involved in the community and taking a lead in that, you're really developing uh, those skill sets that you're not really going to gain um, in a lot of places. Yes.